I I think honestly that's the only word that I can I can have for this. This is something so there are two things that are actually really, really, really smart about what she's doing here. It's like her breath has been taken away, right? It's like she's exasperated. And it's genuine, right? These are the things that are coming out, but it, it, she's not like, I'm going to sound exasperated, right? This is, this is a very real internal sentiment. And then she's expressing it vocally, right? It's good stuff. So, every time I see you, I die a little. She's starting out very, very gently with the sort of, right, like exasperated breath. Now, she's more like, I don't know what just happened there. Um, now it's more like speech like singing. One of the things, like, if you don't do a lot of theater or you, like, don't pay attention to a lot of acting, you'd look at the words and be like, sad. Sad. You can't play sad. Sad is a feeling, right? You don't, you don't act sad, right? This is a song where I am sad the whole time. You don't do that. So, wait, the reason why it's a sad song, a uh, love song, a secret love song, is because there's positive, joyful emotions. You don't, if you don't feel positive and joyful about something at some point in time, there's no sense of loss, right? So she's starting out really, really, really well. Really well. The emotional setup, top tier. Let's keep going with it. You gotta love that switch. This is very, very heartfelt. Why can't you hold me in the street? Why can't <sighs> there is, there is, the, where's the, the reason I'm swooning? When singers start out, like when they're learning, they don't, they hate when their high notes sound fragile, right? They don't like it. The, the second you even suggest falsetto, right? Someone's going to go like, <clears throat> I never. But these are legitimate sounds that you can use for expressive purposes, right? She's not somebody who's, <laughs> I mean, like, this is my first time listening to her, but I'm going to, I'm just going to say, it doesn't sound like she's going to struggle with her high notes. This is a choice. And it's a really, really good choice like it's like this break here is just so good beautiful in that sequence alone there's actually quite a bit happening and it's really cool and for this we're gonna need science wrong hand science i'm a youtuber i'm professional all right so when we go high, we can go high of, uh, like, in three different ways, okay? The most common is what's called the thyroid cartilage tilt. This is the most common. It's more of your classical singing kind of style. No! Right? Like the little Halloween dummies you would get uh, in the 90s. Uh, so that's the most common way. Uh, the other way is belting. Right, we get a little cricoid cartilage tilt, fattens the folds there. Yeah, buddy, we get a nice belt. But the third way, and again, this is the brittle thing that a lot of people, when they're learning, they don't like it. They don't like the sound. They don't want this sound. But um, uh, Morissette Amon, I think that's right, is letting her larynx go super high and thinning the folds out a lot. And avoiding any of this, any of these tilts. 
And what that does is it gives you a brittle sound which is perfectly appropriate for what she's doing, right? Uh, right? Now, the second part of this, right? Because again, there's actually quite a bit going on. The second part of this that I absolutely adore is this right here. So, the reason I love that, the reason that actually gives me chills, that is the Disney princess technique in combination with some valve changes for changes in color. So what is, what is the Disney princess technique? Okay. Uh, let's go back to larynx. Disney, uh, the people who played princesses, right? The people who played Ariel, who played... Uh, um, what's it? Uh, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, what? What's her face? You know what I'm talking about. Little town, it's a quiet village, right? That lady. The women who played those parts were not teenagers. They were not young women. So this is what they did to make adjustments, right? They would raise their larynx, and then pretty much from there sing classically. So there's a big difference between, like, uh, let's say, uh, there we go, like, between this versus right? Little town, it's a quiet, no, little town, it's a quiet village. And that's going to sound youth, youthful and vulnerable, okay? But that's not all, because, but wait, there's more, right? We have this. What can I kiss you all the day? She backs off on the K because when you have a when you have a vowel like that, or sorry, a consonant like that, if you hold those, even just I mean, this is an exaggeration. She's not doing this, but it's it's it'll teach you why you actually have to back off a little bit on those consonants. Hold it. There's a buildup, right? So because she's singing in a fragile way, she has to back up on that K, which is kind of impressive because she's already singing really, really, really light. Basically as light as you can for her. The vowels are a little bit more bright here. Then she rounds out the vowel on the Disney technique, which kind of brings it Hmm. Obviously, the most important element of this is the emotional delivery. I highly doubt that she's going like, oh, I'm going to do this here, I'm going to do this here. Because she's, she's that good. She's that good that she's internalized the technique to be an extension of, a very, of, of an artist that has a lot to say. She has so much to say. Let's continue. Nice little subtle kind of yodel here that I thought was really interesting. Let's go back for that. Now this is where I'm gonna I'm gonna piss off a lot of people because I'm about to use the F word. I'm about to say falsetto. But let me let me exactly clarify, because a lot of people are gonna be that's head voice, that's mixed voice. And and the definitions here get a little subjective. But it's worth paying attention to. Basically, what we're talking about is a breathy sound. On purpose, right? So here we have, oh no, we don't have the vocal folds. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay. So what is head voice versus what is falsetto? Really, what we're talking about is kind of a continuum, okay? You see how these right here in the front, these are the folds, okay? Do you see how they're a little closer together in the front? So what you can do is you can bring them together, and then some of it can be apart. 
And this actually takes quite a tremendous amount of breath control. Um, Countertenors, who are basically falsetto specialists, can actually get quite a bit of power from their falsetto, but it's also harder to control because this isn't sealed. Air is just going out. So you actually have to be really, really precise with your breath control if you're something like, if you're someone like a countertenor, uh, which is, again, a falsetto specialist. You're not, like, born a countertenor. Uh, and fun fact, <laughs> because it's falsetto, basses actually have the most range. Because uh, these, what happens with falsetto is the only range limit is basically how thin the folds can stretch, but they don't touch each other, so they stretch out like this as they blow on the air. So the people who have larger folds actually have more range. Anyway. That's that about falsetto. A um, few interesting facts. So what Morissette is doing is partial closer. Now, when, when, at what point partial closer becomes falsetto versus head voice is such a stupid argument that I don't even want to mention it. If you want to have that in the comments, you go town. I'm not going to read them. <laughs> like, I just, I don't care. Um, this is what she's doing though. She's giving a little bit of closure and letting it go. And again, the intentional vulnerability is beautiful. It's really, really lovely. Right here. Oops, right here. It's obvious you're for me. Every piece of you. Oops. Will that change dramatically? Um, whew. so that was a shift. She has such a beautiful tone. It's, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's, it's good. It's a good tone. Come on. That's just so good. The use of tone quality to bring the words to life, to bring the song to life is so mature but i'll never show it on my face she goes from light to breathy uh, to da 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 right lowered larynx which ret really retracted vocal uh false folds which give you a really really fat sound if you retract them and then she brings them together to do speech like singing okay so we go uh, no. Larynx doesn't change that much, but the, the false folds come together a little bit. You, false folds have an entire range of motion, right? You, like, if you just, uh, for a second, like, smell something, just imagine smelling something you really love. That opening that you're going to feel, that's the false fold retraction. So she's she's got this range of motion in a very, very particular part of her instrument and she's got it on lock and that we get this whole experience with just this phrase this is that's a really interesting sound and it reminds me a lot of mariah carey specifically I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. I actually don't know what that is. Um, sounds great though. I mean, it's it sounds like a voice crack that has air, but it like it like it. I don't know. It, it's a really cool sound. I never. I, I don't know where that comes from. Oh. Whew. Okay, the growl is nice. Oh, it's so, it's, her phrasing is so smart. And again, it's not, it's not like manufactured. Like 
she's probably sung the song like a million times and played a bunch of different ways. So what can it be like that? What can it be? Right. We get we get that again, that vulnerability, that, uh, uh, you know, higher larynx sound, obviously not as high as before, but a little higher. And then on the second part of that phrase, she brings in the contrast. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> that low grind there, and then this. Gymnastics. She just got a gold medal. A gold medal in singing. Let's talk about why. Let's talk about why this is so darn good. Okay. We're going <laughs> to... This is, yeah, this is this is gonna be involved. Okay, so you know, higher larynx, right? Lower larynx. We got the false fold retraction right here, and then it comes back in after it retracts, right? And then on this phrase, up, very very little tilt. What can it be like that? Right? And then a growl, which is just a bunch of grinding here, but on the low end with very little air, so it's safe. And then this crack, which is so interesting. Because what it means to crack in general, like, let's see, the crack in general, right, we'll have, a, we'll have this, and then they'll just pop open, right? We'll have closure, and then they'll just pop open. But what's so cool about it, and is she has complete and utter control, popping open on a crack usually is something we don't want, right? Like... Is that a high note or is that a Tarzan impression? <laughs> right? Like, we don't like that sound. But she uses it just like a touch of it. And you got you to realize, the vocal folds, this, this thing, this is the size of a dime in the average female. Okay? And, I, and, and in males, it's the size of a nickel. These are small, small little things with no nerve endings. Right? So she brings them together, then cracks them on purpose, and then brings them together. And not only that, not only that, she's doing it while she's controlling her larynx. Okay? It goes, it goes crack, and then it goes cricoid cartilage because I'm a bamf. And that makes the folds really fat and powerful. So she's going closed, open, fat together in one phrase. One phrase. That's what they call good. Tony the Tiger, sit down. No one cares about frosted flakes. We got more set. I'm on, which I think I just, I think I just said that right. But let's continue, because this is really, really good. Okay, okay. Someone, someone has listened to Mariah Carey. Okay, this, this is, this can't be coincidence, because I've only heard this from Mariah. Oh. Okay, high note. Okay. She's so smart. She's so smart. A belt that high, you really, you're really balancing it on a knife's edge. And huh, this should go without saying, but for some reason, people, I, I don't know if they have, like, they feel like they have something to prove. Don't hold a note that's not going well. Now, I'm not saying that didn't go well. I'm saying she got off of it the second that it even had a hint of not going well. Listen, nobody's perfect. And so you have to be able to adjust on the fly when things happen. Again, super small instrument, super volatile instrument. It's not really, it's really one of the most unreliable and inconsistent uh, uh, instruments there are changes every day so the fact that she can pull this off and then get off of it before i think most people would notice that it's just like it's a it's like teetering maybe it's a little bit here and she just gets off of it and she does it 
flawlessly. Damn it, that's good. Okay. The belt, super, super high. But I love the note after it. Hey, who needs to breathe, right? No, I, I, I love this. I love this. This is, this is, I was, I was, everyone was telling me, oh, like, she's the Mariah Carey of of asia or or something to that effect she is very much her own singer this tone quality is immaculate i don't know how old she is but she sounds younger a little bit it's beautiful it's there's a velvety tone that she can play with and it's re it's stunning it's really, really, really stunning. I, I think, honestly, that's the only word that I can, I can have for this. It's, re it's amazing. And it's beautiful. And the execution is outstanding. And what I love about this, too, is, again, this is the first time I've heard it, but people said that, you know, maybe she was average. Maybe she was good, but not, like, next level. But I love this because here's the thing. Talent that is complacent will never be talent that also practices and, and, and really pays attention to the details. And I'm happy if there is a, a recording where she's not like super great or she's just good or whatever. I'm so happy that exists. Singing is this thing where people have this myth. You either have it or you don't. Or you don't. You're just, you can't come out the womb singing fantastically, or you just can't sing at all. It just, you can't, you can't do it. Shut up, Karen. In, inner, inner Karen. You can get good at this. I'm not saying that with practice alone you'll be this good, but it is a skill. And you can cultivate that skill. And this should encourage people. Don't give if you love to sing, do it. And and to hell with anybody who would tell you to shut up. Alright? I started young. I saw Bugs Bunny. I started singing Figaro, right? In the bathtub. My brother knocked on the door. He said, Shut up. And I said, I could do this. I might. I might be into this, right? Anyway, so this is my first time listening to Morissette uh, Aman. I think that's it. Um, I was told this would blow my hair back, so I got I'm prepared, right? I'm just I've pre blown it. Let's get on with this. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. Uh, Discord and Twitch is where I'm going to be streaming with audio consistently, especially, especially for singers. So down in the description down below, uh, click away, follow, you know, join, whatever. Uh, that's where we're going to do, be doing a lot of live streaming for singers. Uh, I'd love to see you there.